إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله We praise Allah All praise due to him We ask him for assistance and we ask him for forgiveness And we seek, and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our deeds Whoever Allah guides there is no one who can misguide them and whoever leaves, leaves to be misguided there is no one who can guide them, and I bear witness that none deserves to be worshipped except Allah alone, and that He has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is His servant and His messenger. Tonight, bi'idni Allah Taala, we want to discuss or speak about an important matter, and that is the effect or the effects that worship has on the Muslim, or that it should have on us. This is because many of us don't give that much importance to our worship and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in many cases we find that we are far from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe, or the best of us of those who perform those things that are an obligation upon us. And even the obligations, in many cases we do not perform them the way we should. When we look at the purpose why we are created, the purpose of the creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That I have not created, I have not created mankind or man and jinn except to worship me. So the purpose of the creation, why Allah created us, is to worship Him and obey Him. So you would think that our focus would be more on worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything else. If we truly understood the, our purpose in this dunya, in this life. If we look at the first command in the Quran, we find that it was the command to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in these verses we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned some of the reasons why he deserves to be worshipped. He says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ عَبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ O people, worship your Lord who created you and those who came before you لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may achieve taqwa. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned some of his favors upon us. Explaining or showing to us the reason why he deserves to be worshipped. Him and only him. He says, الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشًا وَالسَّمَاءَ بِنَاءً وَأَنزَلَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَخْرَجَ بِهِ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ رِزْقًا لَكُمْ he says, Alladhi, the one who ha has made the earth as a firasha, as a bed for you, and the sky as a ceiling for you, and he has sent down from the sky water from which fruits were sent as a provision for you. And then at the end of the verse it says, andada wa antum ta'lamun." So do not set up partners with him or with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you know or knowingly. This is the first command of the Quran and it is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Abudu Rabbakum. The one who created you, Alladhi Khalaqakum. And the first prohibition in the Quran as well is to not associate partners with him. When he says, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا And between the mentioning of this command and this prohibition, he mentions his bounties upon us, that he provided for us these things. So you would think that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for us, we would worship him more. However, we find that 
Many of us do not think of this when we are given these bounties and favors that they should encourage us or should remind us that we should worship Allah even more. And what's even worse is that some people, when they are given these favors and bounties, they become even further away from worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And rather than obeying Him in regards to these bounties, we find them disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we were to look at the biographies of the scholars of Islam and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum before them, and before them the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will find the importance of worship in their lives and the effect that it had on them. If you look at the biographies of the scholars, you'll find that they always mention their worship, their ibadah, fasting, praying the night prayer, reciting the Quran because this was something that was very important in their life. And it had an effect on them and their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their life in general. And in many cases we find that when you speak to people about worship, then they think of it as something that only affects the individual and has nothing to do with other people. And we look at the types of worship or ibadah, there are many types of worship. There are ibadah that relate to the body, the physical worship, acts of worship, other acts of worship by the tongue, lisan, and some in the heart. But what we want to mention or focus on is one of the most important acts of worship, and that is salah, prayer. As we know, the most important pillar in Islam after the shahadatain is salah. However, in many cases we find that when people are reminded of prayer or the way they look at it, again, as if it's something that يعني, is related to me and only me and that's my business. And you shouldn't worry about it. And in many cases we find that people who have their shortcomings in prayer in regards to their salah, even in the faraid, obligations, uh, we take it as a light matter, as if it's not that important. And the scholars of Islam have mentioned that the person who may drink or commit other crimes in Islam, their status or their situation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not as great as the person who leaves praying. Meaning the person who is neglectful in terms of their prayer in the sight of Islam is worse than other people who we may not look at as being as bad. And this is something that it shouldn't be the case. So we look at the salah again. And the reason why I mentioned salah is because, as we mentioned, the salah is the first pillar after the shahadatain. And in many cases, when we think about prayer or acts of worship, we think of them in regards to their reward, the ajr. Or that this thing is an obligation, so I'm going to perform the prayer, for example. I have to pray because it's obligation. I have to pray because I want the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so forth. And we don't think of the effect that it has on our lives or on us as individuals and then on the society. If we look in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talks about the salah. He says, Inna salata it says that the prayer, salah, prohibits the person from fahsha, immorality, and munkar, yani sins in general. So the salah should prevent us from doing evil deeds, prevent us from sinning. It's not just something that we do, enter the masjid and leave, and life goes on as it was before the prayer. But rather, this salah should have an effect on us after the prayer. However, in many cases, we don't find or we don't see this effect on us because there's something's missing. Whether it's our khushu'a, focus on our prayer. When we enter the salah and we leave the masjid, many of us don't even know what the imam recited, how many rakats we prayed. So we enter the salah and we leave without really focusing on the prayer itself. And therefore, we don't see that effect on us even though this should be the effect. We should have this effect on us. The salah should prohibit us from doing wrong things, oppressing people, lying, cheating, stealing, to the end of it. 
So it's not just something that يعني, related to us as individuals only, but rather it should affect us also and related to other people, how we deal with them. And for this reason, we find that <coughs> a man came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said that so-and-so, he prays the night prayer. However, in the morning he stills. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he responded to that person and said, Satanhahu, and it's going to prevent him, it will stop him. So the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that this person, even though he's praying, he's praying night prayer, this is voluntary prayer. It seems like from the hadith that this was an obligation even. But this person is even doing more than normal people. However, in the morning he was stilling. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his response was that it will prevent him. And this means that the acts of worship of the salah in particular here, it should have an effect on the person. We may not see it. You don't know the effect that the salah or the act of worship has on individuals, so not to assume that it doesn't have an effect. Because as we said, we find people in many cases saying that this person prays or he does this and that. However, in addition to the fact that he's praying, he does other things. And I see him doing this or that to the end of it. So what's the benefit of praying? Or what's the benefit of being a person who prays and you're gonna do this and that? And that's of course is wrong because we don't know what the effect that it had on that person. Maybe that that salah prevented him from other things to the end of it. But if we perform the prayer the way it should be performed as you mentioned, then it has an effect, it should have an effect on us. Another hadith also which relates to the salah or another verse is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَىٰ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, or He commands us in this verse to seek help through patience and prayer. And the scholars, when they explain this, this verse, they mention that the prayer and patience helps a person, gives them patience, uh, facing the child's tribulations, challenge that we have in life. And for this reason, we find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would always pray when he faced an important matter or even something that caused him anxiety or a problem. As in the hadith, kana idha hazabahu amrun salla. Yani it's something, faced the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi something important or some sort of something that bothered him. He would go and pray. So this was the solution for this problem. Now in many cases, again, when we face problems, people, a lot of people are depressed and they have issues. Uh, they don't know how to deal with them. And in many cases, they go to resort to medication or seeing a doctor or somebody and so forth. Or some people, when they are depressed or something, they may say, we go for a walk or something, do something else. But Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we see in this hadith and from the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that praying was that solution. Praying was the solution for these feelings, these things, these problems. And we find the implementation of this also by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah. When the news of his brother came to him that he passed away, he died and he was traveling, he stopped his camel and he got off of the camel. And he prayed two rak'ahs. He prayed two rak'ahs and he sat in the prayer for a long time. And then after he finished praying, he recited this verse, وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ salah, Seek help through patience and prayer. So we find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he faced these issues and these problems, he went to the salah, he prayed to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. It was a relief to bring ease to his heart, tranquility, peace. This is something that we all seek. However, we do not look for this in the prayer. And this is because, as we mentioned before, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way we pray, we don't find this, we don't feel this. So it's upon us to try to change the way we look at the salah and we pray when we enter the masjid. Why are we praying? What do we expect from the prayer? What should it bring to us? Comfort, ease. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa it did to him. And another narration also, again, we find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would tell Bilal radiallahu anhu, he says, Aqim salah. He would say to him, Arihna biha ya Bilal. He would say to him, bring comfort to us through the salah. So this salah was a form of raha. 
يعني comfort ease to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the salah was the way he felt يعني when he went to feel better when he went to remove the stress and so forth the tra- we always face problems in our lives and we pray five times a day the salah is something that's repeated there are other things in the sunnah or in the Quran that we cry to do that help us with our problems and so forth but the salah is something that we repeat every day at least five times a day however when we look at our lives we don't see that this the salah has this effect on us we don't find the raha the prophet sallallahu when he says arihna bring ease bring comfort to us in the prayer this is something that a person looks forward to in many cases when we hear the iqama or we hear the adhan even we find that people it's as if it's a problem or they are worried I have to go pray now it's like a burden on them and this shouldn't be the case rather a person should be happy when you hear about something that you like and it's pleasing to you you look forward to it but in our, in our case that's not in our situation that's not really the case but that was the case of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as we see in this narration he says Arihna biha ya bilad and in another verse in the Quran also we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he speaks about the people disbelieving in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he felt about it he was disturbed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa laqad na'lamu annaka yadhiqu sadruka bima yaqulun fasabbih bihamdi rabbika wa kun min as-sajideen wa abud rabbaka hatta yatiyaka al-yaqeen he says, we know that your heart has been constrained from what they say. This believers, what they said about the Prophet wasallam, disturbed him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he tell him? He says, فَسَبِّحْ بِرَحْمْدِ رَبِّكَ Glorify your Lord or with praise. And he says, what? وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِينَ Be from those people who prostrate. Meaning, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he tells him how to deal with this thing that he's feeling. What he's feeling from the disbelievers when they attacked him and they disbelieved in him and his message. He says to him what? To prostrate. فَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ So we find in these different narrations, verses of the Qur'an and from the uh, examples of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum of this matter. Also in the Badr Badr. The Sahabi narrates that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when everyone was asleep, they were sleeping, he said the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was up praying to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So we find that the prayer, the salah in the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we find in the Quran as well, was the solution for the problems that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam faced, and this was a practice that he had. And this should be the case with us, or we should try at least to change the way we look at the salah and it shouldn't be something that we just do like it's like uh, sports or it's exercise or something as many cases we run into the masjid and we leave the masjid and we don't really know what happened aslan in the first place we don't focus on the prayer the prayer is a relationship with you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it includes in the prayer the dua supplication is one of the most important things the solution for many problems in the prayer we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we encourage to supplicate to him especially when we are prostrating Rabbi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says أَقْرَبْ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدْ فَأَكْثِرُ فِيهِ مِنَ الدُّعَاءِ يعني the most and the most place the close place that the servant is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when he is in prostration so you should make a lot of dua so we find that again a dua which is in something recommended in the prayer is one of the best places to make dua. So when we pray, we should think differently about the prayer, the salah, and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, generally speaking, and worship, yani in, uh, salah in particular, and worship in general, because this is the solution for many of our problems, and it should have an effect, positive effect on us, and our lives, not just as, we shouldn't look at it as, yani just prayer, as act of worship, it's my, business don't worry about it uh, and we look at other people as if it doesn't affect them and the society rather it does affect them because the society is made up of individuals if they are righteous then that would have an impact on the society as a whole and if they are not then the same 
So it's upon us to change our view, the way we look at the prayer, and we should try to focus on the salah when we pray and think about what we are praying, why we are praying, and there are many things that help us uh, to, how, to help us to improve our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we pray, and that's something that we should look into as well. When we pray, when we come to the masjid, what are we thinking, what, what's on our mind? How we should we come to the prayer? These things, all of these things, thinking about these things, prepar the preparation, the mental preparation, is very important. So when we pray, we will have, hopefully this, we will have, uh, the prayer will have some effect on us more than it has now, and hopefully it will help us in our lives, facing our problems, tribulations, and so forth. And as we mentioned, the salah is just an example. But the ibadah in general is important. We think about sadaqah the same. We talk about fasting the same. And that's each one of these acts of worship, uh, and each one of them needs I need to be spoken about in details. But in general, we say that when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever the worship is, whatever the ibadah is, always think of the effect that it should have on you. It's not just, as we mentioned, na'am, it's rewardable, na'am, it's a cause for entering paradise and so forth, but it should have an effect on us and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our relationship with other people and the society in general. And this is... Uh, so we should think differently about the ibadah in general and salah in particular. Uh, inshallah, Ta'ala, we'll stop here. But in the Ta'ala, subhanakallah, muhammadika, shalala, ilaha, 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 If there is anything that's not clear, that needs uh, clarification, or any questions that are related to the topic, inshallah, you can ask in the Ta'ala. Ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. Naam. So he's asking about the khushu'ah. Taban, uh, Yani, of course, this uh, and tonight we wanted to really think about when we pray, you know, how should it affect us? You know, of course, part of that is having the khushu' and the salah. And yani, if you, of course, as we mentioned, when you come to the salah, knowing anything yani, about the pre preparation of the prayer, we make wudu, pray ourselves that we're getting ready to pray, stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and realizing that we are actually standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us to focus on the prayer. If you are standing in front of a king or someone important, you would focus on that person. In many cases, we come to the salah, we just stand, we pray, and we finish the prayer, as I mentioned, and we don't really know what we recited even. Forget about the imam. If we are praying ourselves, we, know, we don't know what we said in the prayer. So, uh, and of course, of course, when we pray also, trying to focus on the meaning of what we're saying is important also. If a person understands the Arabic language, then it helps for sure, and even if they don't, at least we should study the tafsir of Al-Fatiha, the opening chapter of the Quran. Because Al-Fatiha, we look at books of tafsir, alhamdulillah, there are books in English, there are many meanings in every verse of Al-Fatiha. So while you are praying, or even if the Imam is reciting, if you are thinking of some of these meanings of Al-Fatiha, then that's the focus in the prayer. Because if you don't focus on what you are doing, your mind is going to be somewhere else, and that takes away from the prayer itself. Right? Many verses in the Quran, yani we look at, for example, when we recite Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'in That we worship you only and we seek your help Or only we seek your help, tayyib And assistance, yani uh, If we think about everything that we do in this life needs, We need help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala That's why Allah mentioned isti'ana Seeking his help and assistance Even though it's, it's part of the worship That, that Iyaka na'bud Isti'ana is ibadah, form of ibadah, okay? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned ibadah or isti'ana because in every act of worship we need Allah's help and support. This meaning in itself, if we think about it really in our lives and so forth, and everything that we do, and we rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will change the way we look at many things in life. And if you just realize that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports you and helps you, you can achieve anything whether it's difficult or not, and you have this belief, and it's clear in your heart, then that changes the way you think of many things. Right? And every verse, every verse in itself has a lot of meanings that if we were to think about them while we are praying, then that would help us in our khushu'at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, abstaining from sins and other things, that takes away also from the salah, and our focus on the salah and so forth. But the khushu'at is very important in the salah because that helps us achieve these meanings, inshallah ta'ala. No. 
نعم يشد يعني does it soften your heart and يعني people who pray but they're still cruel نعم yeah نعم that's what we mention يعني the صلاة should prevent you should change the person okay but the thing is that we said that if you don't the person is not praying the way they should be praying then it may not have the effect on them okay because we pray five times a day. Five times a day we must pray, right? at least. Right? So imagine throughout the day, you are praying, you realize you're in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After you pray, then that should have an effect on you, right? So you shouldn't just go back to oppressing people, whatever the case may be. Right? But you realize, then it should have an effect on you. But if you pray, you enter the masjid, you leave the masjid, and you don't think about this, then obviously it's not going to have an effect on you. Right? Another thing is that we mentioned about yani, thinking about the salah and the reward. And yani, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi tells us that from one salah to the following salah is a mukaffirat. And yani, Allah forgives our sins, except for the major sins. طيب? So we think about this and yani, realize that hopefully, inshallah, when I pray, Allah is going to forgive me my sins based on this hadith. طيب? That should encourage us to stay away from sins, generally speaking. طيب? Because if people go to Hajj, for example, and they know the reward from Hajj, if they have a perfect Hajj, any Malbrul, accepted, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiven their sins. So you find that people, when they come from Hajj, many people, they try to change their lives. This is mostly what happens, okay? Because they are conscious of this. I want to begin a new beginning, new start. So they avoid or they try to stay away from many things. They change the way they live to the end of it. But the prayer is one of those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us our sins. But we're not thinking about this meaning. But we realize that when we pray, inshallah, these sins will be forgiven. Let me avoid the things that I was doing before as much as possible. Let me prevent myself. Let me think about this before I do it. If we were thinking like this, then it would change. The salah would have a great effect on us. So we have to read about the benefits of the salah, the reward of the salah. What should it do to us to the end of it? So that when we pray, we could hopefully we would think differently about the prayer itself. It's not just something that we just do. Like, you know, it's a workout or something, you just enter, you leave, whatever, at the end of it. But no, it should have an impact on us. And this is with every act of worship. But the salah is just an example because we pray every day and five times a day. So we should try to have, and hopefully this ha the salah has effect on us, inshallah, great effect. Inshallah.